Hello guys, this is PanzerMars36, and today's video is going to be a post-builder review, sort of, of Ryfield Models Panzer IV, Aus of G, not kit number 5053. Now the reason I say sort of is because I didn't actually build this as an Aus of G. I built an Aus of H, and I did that using everything already in the box with the exception of one thing I had to modify here and I had to shave off a lip on another part. But because Ryfield Model makes the house of G here, like a late G, then they make an H and a J, then they make different versions of those because they've got interior and no interior. Because you end up with that and unused parts and spare bits left over from sprues shared between versions, that this kit was pretty all-encompassing and you can build an H or a G with this kit, which is good for me because I actually ended up wanting to build an H. So I'm going to make this post build review uh, not as specific as they usually are. I'm just going to talk more generically about the Ryfield model Panzer IV experience because it was very, very good. So with these post build reviews, I like to start by pointing out all of the aftermarket accessories I've added to the kit so you can understand what's stock and what's not. And it's going to be pretty quick here because the only things I added were personal choice because I just wanted to model a specific vehicle. Um, and not to correct problems or historical accuracy issues with the kit because the kit actually is really, really good. So the only thing is I'm going to add, I've got some aftermarket tracks I'm putting together because my vehicle has a slightly different type of tracks than what the kit gives you, but the kit tracks are perfectly fine for a standard build. I also added a bunch of spare photo etch uh, and resin and plastic tool clamps because my reference vehicle is abandoned so there's no tools left on it or there's not very many tools left on it so again that's just because I want to model a specific vehicle the kit tool clamps are fine if you're building it out of the box and the, the last thing I added was a 3d printed uh, no tech light up front and also the rear light from ET model and that was just because I have a bunch of 3d printed stuff lying around that I might as well use but again the kit part is completely sufficient and I'm pretty sure that's it. So in summary, the kit does not require any aftermarket. It is really well detailed. They give you some photo etch where you need it. Um, I'll show you that here. So here's the, here's the photo etch sheet. You got the side skirt panels if you're gonna use them. Got little uh, bits here that go in the cupola if you're doing the interior bits of which there are not many. More cupola bits. You can use these uh, deflectors for the engine vents here, but I use the plastic ones. And then you just have like, you know, the MG site and a bunch of tool clamp handles and stuff. Um, yeah, like photo etch where you need it, but not so much that it could be a, an issue for like newer modelers. The photo etch on the jack block here is included in the kit, as is the little like lifting hook thing here and the, the gun sight there. They also give you the the head of the axe, which is this guy here. That's photo etch they given in the kit, while the other stuff is stuff that I've added to make the clamps empty. And what's quite interesting is that they actually give you these uh, 3D printed parts, spe specifically in this boxing of the kit. They give you 3D printed little uh, lifting hook details for the hull and for the turret, which look really good. And they also give you the 3D printed smoke launchers, which would go on here, the triple barrel launchers. Here they are. Um, but I'm not using them because those would be on a, on a G, but I build an H using the kit. So these will go in my spare bin and I'll use them sometime in the future. But these are really, really useful because it's always a pain in the butt to scrape the seam lines and everything off of round details like this. Uh, so that's really good to have as a 3D printed accessory. Uh, one thing I'll note though is you can see there's a spare, well not a spare, but it was a bit of a broken lifting hook in here. These were a little bit brittle and I actually broke two of them. Uh, so there should be six because there's, there's, you know, either side of the hull here, either side of the turret here, and there's also two on the back. They're right in there behind the turret bin. So for those two I had to use the plastic parts, but you can barely see them anyway so it doesn't really matter. Um, but that's one thing to note, the, uh, the freebie 3D printed accessories are a little bit brittle, so just be a little careful with them. One thing I'm not super 
happy about, let's say, is that they give you uh, the standard like thread for the tow cable here. It's not really cheap though, it's actually quite good, like I'm, I'm conflicted about this because if they gave you steel cable it would be really really hard to get it wound around the Panzer IV, the little plastic hooks here, without it pulling the hooks off or it just kinking up and not looking like a metal cable which you know has some kind of spring to it. Uh, but this thread, I'm not sure how convincing it's going to look when I paint it up, but it's really the only option I have here. The usual copper tow cable you get in some kits, I think that would be better because that's a nice middle ground between flexibility and also realism. But I'm going to give this a shot and if it looks like crap I'll just yank it off because it's not actually glued in. And it'll replace it with something else like some copper and resin or something, I don't know. But for now I'm going to give this a try. That's really the only disappointing thing in this kit is that they give you the thread here. I don't know why they couldn't afford copper if they're going to throw in all that photo etch and even some freebie uh, 3D printed parts for the smoke launchers and the lifting hooks. All right, let's talk a little bit about the actual build, just kind of briefly generic stuff. So all of the wheels, drive sprocket, and every single one of the actual uh, bogey wheels and everything, and the idler wheel, they all have poly caps, which is something that I really appreciate in a kit because then when I'm when I'm doing the post build review, the wheels aren't falling off everywhere. Well, correction here. The return rollers do not have poly caps because they're too small. I just glue them on and I'll brush paint the rubber later. But all the wheels that could feasibly have a poly cap do have a poly cap, which is excellent and I appreciate the Rykeville model wants to make the build a little bit better, makes it much easier to put everything together, and then I can pop them off for painting and they're not going to roll away and stuff. I really like that. Uh, the rifle model Stug that I built recently was the same except all of the poly caps for the road wheels were short shot. In this kit everything was good. I do wish however that they gave you a poly cap or something for the gun because it is super loose. Now that's not exactly a big issue because I'm just going to you know make sure I paint and then I paint and then I'll just glue it kind of in the middle to match my photo. But I kind of wish it would stay up a little bit. It's kind of it's just floppy. <laughs> now the tracks they give you in the kit, which I haven't put together, but they're exactly the same as the ones on the Stug that I recently reviewed by Rifield Model. Uh, they're just, you know, you've got the little tracks on kind of sprues, they're just like lengths. So there's minimal cleanup, and then you end up with the little uh, pegs or the pins on the baby sprues, so you stick them in like five at a time and just run and glue along it. If you want more depth, look at my Rifield Model Stug review. But in that video, the exact same tracks, they work really well. Nothing really wrong with them. They, they take a little while to put together, but they're not honestly too bad. They work really great. And I mean, I guess if you're like a, more of a beginner modeler, that's a lot of effort. You might as well use like a magic track or rubber band track. But I mean, this kit is probably geared more towards a, a mid-range modeler or an advanced modeler. So it just kind of comes with the territory. But I really like those tracks and I would have used them if my re reference photo would have had that, had that type of track. But like I said before, my reference photo is a different type of track. So that's why I've selected some metal tracks to model that vehicle. Uh, the the uh, part here, actually, the whole muffler assembly itself has really nice weld detail on it. That's one thing I know in this kit. There's really nice weld detail on like small little locations where you usually wouldn't have that, even on a Dragon kit, which is to me the standard for a nicely detailed Panzer IV. There's just really nice subtle weld detail like on the cupola which I've left separate so I can put the glass blocks in after I paint it. There's, there's actually a weld detail around here which I believe there is not on the actual Dragon Panzer IV. And this comes as like a couple of slide molded parts when you put it together. It all lines up and you got beautiful welds there and everything. The welds and bolts on this kit are amazing. The rear hull plate here, the slab that goes on the back here and meets up with the edges of the engine deck and the roof, you just kind of like put the parts together and they don't really want to snuggle up along that weld. Maybe a bit of a warp or something, I don't know. But I just solved that. I left off the hatches here. There's three hatches. So I can actually just take my clamp and then I just, you know, clamp the rear plate and I just clamp the rear plate, you know, between the edge of there and that. 
clamp it here, glue it, and then you let that dry and you move over a little bit, clamp it, glue it. And then that makes sure that the weld seam here and everything is lined up nicely. And the only other place I had any fit issue was a similar scenario on the turret here. Um, there's a few different parts going together. Let me uh, pop off the side skirts. I do this for ease of painting, but they can just get in the way right now. So the turret is a few different parts that go together as the assembly. You've got the top, which includes the sides. Then you've got a piece here that kind of goes on the bottom with this angle here. We'll call that the chin. This is the sides and the top, and then you've also got the front plate. Uh, when I glued all three together, or let's say when I glued the chin to this, it it just didn't line up 100% perfect, and it was, you know, there was like a, maybe an extra half a millimeter sticking off this way. So when I tried to glue the the front plate on, you ended up you ended up with a bit of a gap along here in the top. So I just had to knock back the the edge right here of this angle with a file you know like half a millimeter or less just knock it back a little bit so that when I would then glue the front plate the turret on the welds along the top here all lined up that was the only other issue apart from the rear and both those are super super simple you just you know a little bit of clamping or a little bit of sanding and again while we're looking at the turret here let's just admire the beautiful welds and everything along all of these assemblies here nice screws and bolts all over the turret this is dragon but you know 50 percent better again these are top of the line excellent molding i can't wait for rifle model to do like a whole series of panzer threes or something that would be awesome currently they only have i think one version and actually let's keep looking at the turret i really like how they've done the side skirts they got nice big locating tabs where the parts click in so that i can do what I have done and leave this whole thing separate for painting because I just friggin hate German side skirts when it comes to painting them because they're getting painted all the sides and everything it's just it's a pain in the butt love late German tanks but I hate the side skirts to just because of painting them so um, this I just basically dry fit everything because it clicks together glue it and then now I've got this much easier I'll paint them all separately, then I'll glue it in, and then I'll do any touch-ups and weathering. Same thing with the actual turret bit. I can leave this out. It clicks nicely into place, and this way I can make sure I get paint here and on the back of the turret and don't have any uh, plastic showing through, and then I can click it all back together for the final camo coat and everything. Yeah, this is, uh, this is good engineering. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what more there is to talk about the kit, other than the fact it was really, really fun to put together, and... I want to build more rifle and model stuff. This is great. Like I said, detail was excellent. Fit was really good for the most part, except for those two little spots where it was still very easy to correct. Uh, the tracks are great. The place they give you photo watch is perfect. It's not overdone. It's not too little where it detracts. I think it's a nice middle ground there for at least what I like in my builds. And the way that some parts are uh, modular like this makes it even very easy for me to leave it a little bit separate for painting especially the poly caps and the wheels i guess the only thing i would like but i don't know how it's possible is that the side skirts could somehow be uh, at least for the hull here the same as the turret currently i've just got it kind of tacked on with some masking fluid but it is hard to paint camouflage stripes when you've got these side skirt rails on the way so I'll, I'll pull these off and i'll paint the stripes and I'll stick them back on so this kit definitely has my seal of approval. Rifled model is knocking it out of the park recently. And I also really appreciate that the kit had enough spare parts from different boxings that I was actually able to build this as an house of H instead of an house of G. Now if you want any detail on how I actually did the conversion, turning the, the kit into an house of H, uh, I did a full breakdown on my Patreon page, which you can go look at for a dollar a month. Or I'm enough of a sucker where you just send me messages on Facebook and I'll give you the breakdown that way for free. Uh, but it was very, very basic. It was just choosing a couple extra parts, namely things like, you know, a later muzzle brake, the solid armor here instead of the bolted armor, a few other bits and bobs. But everything was there except I had to slice off a lip along this, the, uh, the transmission plate where it meets the bow there because it was meant for the bolted armor version. And I had to modify this. You can see white styrene there. I had to modify this 
uh, side skirt support rail to match the style of this one because they gave you like a G style. That's it. Those are the only two things I'd do any modification. The rest was just swapping parts that are like unused grayed out parts on the instructions. And uh, when it comes to these changes, big thanks to my buddy Bruce from the YouTube channel, Bruce the Model Noob, because he's the Panzer IV guy, much like I'm the Stug guy. So he gave me a ton of help there. If you like Panzer IVs and German stuff, go check out his channel. He got a really good video recently on uh, testing all the German grays on the market. So yeah, I'll, I think I'll leave it here. Uh, just a generic overview of the kit. Hope you guys found that to be a little bit helpful. I'm sorry it wasn't the full post build review, but I didn't want to do that because this kit was kind of like a weird mishmash of me trying to figure out how to change it and it kind of got... I made a few mistakes and I had to slice parts off and stuff. <laughs> but like I said, rifle model Panzer IVs are excellent. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like my stuff, you can go support me on Patreon. That really helps me buying some aftermarket to test tracks and stuff like that. I appreciate you guys liking and commenting. Any questions, leave them on below and I will read through them all and reply as best as I can. And I will see you guys next time. I will paint this up very soon, but next video might be a T-34 or something else. I never know. Anyways, until then, stay safe and happy modeling. See ya.